let's consider the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, Navier-Stokes equation they um, models uh, incompressible fluid flow, and we are going to consider the case when we are in R two, so it's two-dimensional problems only. The Navier-Stokes equations uh, are written in vector form in this way. Um, this u, which is an vector of two components, one in x direction and another in x two direction, uh, will satisfy this equation. Here we note uh, that uh, this Laplacian of this vector function u, uh, which uh, by the way is the velocity field in the x direction and the y direction, uh, can be written as a following vector, where each component is the Laplacian of uh, the scalar function u1 uh, and u2 respectively. Uh, note that the Laplacian of a scalar function is always uh, the second derivative of the function with respect to the first variable plus the second derivative of the function with respect to the second variable. Moreover, uh, we have that uh, gradient of P, uh, where P in fact is the pressure inside the fluid. Uh, it's um, just as usual, the usual gradient, which is the partial derivative of the pressure in uh, the first direction, x1, and the second component uh, contains um, the partial derivative of the pressure P with respect to the second variable. Moreover, uh, the partial derivative of the vector U with respect to the time is just defined as the partial derivative of, uh, of uh, the first variable U1 with respect to the time T, and the second component of this vector is the partial derivative of u2 with respect to the time t. In addition, we have that the divergence of, uh, of this vector function u should be equal to zero. And we recall that uh, the divergence uh, of, of a vector is just the partial derivative of the first component with respect to the first variable variable plus the partial derivative of the second component with respect to the second variable. So uh, this quantity should be zero. That means that we have incompressible fluid. It's not um, the divergence is uh, is always zero in such cases. Uh, it remains now to explain what we mean by this term. It's a little bit more complicated, let's just see. Uh, this, uh, the gradient of a vector function is, uh, is the matrix defined in the following way. We just take the gradient of each of these components and place it like this. This is the gradient of the first component and this is the gradient of the second component. So we form a matrix in this way and what do we mean by uh, the scalar product or, or the dot product here of uh, the function, the vector function u with this matrix? Well, we take this uh, vector and uh, um, we multiply it with the transpose of this vector. What is the transpose? We keep the diagonal and uh, swap the off-diagonal elements and obtain uh, this matrix. So, in order to find this uh, uh, this product, we we think in the following way: we, this uh, product should be a new vector of two components, and the first component is this. Uh, times this plus this times this and this yellow uh, component is 
uh, this times this plus this times this. So it's written in this way, both of these terms. Uh, we will in this course only consider uh, two components. So, and the, the first component is in uh, x direction and the second is in y direction. So we may replace uh, this u1 and u2 with ux and uh, uy respectively. Please don't confuse this with uh, the derivative of uh, u with respect to x and u with respect to y, which we uh, sometimes use as a notation. And moreover, the x1 component is we just uh, replace it by x, and the x2 component is replaced by y. If we write uh, this vector uh, matrix or uh, this vector equation uh, component wise we obtain these uh, two equations let me just explain the term uh, rho which is the density of the uh, fluid and this uh, component th this uh, factor is just the uh, viscosity of the fluid. And as I told you earlier, the divergence of the vector, um, that the, the fact that this is zero, can be written in the following way.